These are baskets from Africa with the same technique that uh, I use today in making my basket. These, the, you see the similarity in the coiling and the stitching pattern. It's very much the same thing what I do. My ancestors who were brought as slaves from Africa brought these baskets with them along with the tradition. This is what they used every day for food stuff or these are baskets for utilitarian use. And uh, these are very old African baskets. Some of them are done with a little le leather around the rim, as in this case. But traditionally, most of, uh, in, in, in my tradition, we didn't add leather when this art form came to my area where I live. Uh, I'll show you the early, these are from the 1800s from my community that men, uh, from this tradition I should say, that men made for agricultural use. This is a field basket it's called because it's for grain and storage or not grain storage but to carry vegetables or to hold grain when it's harvest and women use this basket as well for laundry when they use and they carry this sometimes on the head for with um, vegetables produce to the market these are examples of functional baskets agricultural baskets done in a bowl shaped like this and here's another example of a, just a harvest basket and men made these baskets from a grass called bulrush. Bulrush is a reed-like grass that comes from the marsh. It's coarse and stiff, and they were able to make very big forms, uh, and, and they're bound together with strips of oak wood. The wood would be stripped and, uh, from the tr after it's cut from the tree, and they bound all of the grasses together with uh, oak strips. Here we have some traditional household baskets from the early 1920s uh, that women made. This is all with sweet grass. See, the sweet grass is still here within the coil. And if you'll notice, I'm feeling this and it's not crumbling because the sweet grass is a very strong uh, fiber that has been used for making these baskets since the early days when it came to this country. Uh, they found sweetgrass that grew in the wetlands along the coast and adopted sweetgrass because it has a long life and it's very strong but pliable that women preferred using sweetgrass instead of bulrush. And these are little sewing boxes or uh, baskets to, um, to hold things. And they're just different uh, shapes and design. These were also used for bread as well because people put a cloth napkin in here and uh, put hot biscuits and rolls and stuff in this basket on the table. So these are sweet grass baskets. These are traditional designs, it's called, and these are the forms that have been passed down for over 300 years in this tradition where we've kept these uh, forms and they were taught to basket makers who were learning from their ancestors, like in my case, my mother uh, taught me and my grandmother uh, how to make baskets. And these are forms that I learned to do first. These are unfinished pieces in, that I'm working on of both sweet grass, the lighter color in the center, as well as this bulrush grass here. This is very coarse and stiff. These, this is palmetto from the tree that's lacing all of the grasses together or I'm sewing it together with palmetto. Sewing is the terminology that's used for binding all of the grasses together. And I often have many pieces in my studio at any given time where I'm working on a, something that will eventually become a basket. And uh, so I work a little at a time on something. See, this one is all bulrush. And if you can see the similarity here, this is modern and that's old. 